Video games are a favorite pastime for... I knew as soon as I started doing this, somebody would knock on the door. Okay, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's try that again, shall we? Uh, video games. I was totally wound up to do this last night. I had my speech, I had my spiel, and I can't think of any of it cohesively now. Okay, I got it this time. Um, when you think about video games and you think about the, the value that you get from them and what makes a video game really, really great, one of the things that comes up more often than not is the subject of replayability. Uh, some of the greatest games from uh, my past have been games that, have, that had a whole lot of replayability, either because they were so much fun that you just wanted to go through and experience the gameplay mechanic over and over and over again, a la your Mario Brothers type games. Uh, or they had multiple endings, multiple outcomes, multiple ways to accomplish things, like your StarCraft games or my own personal favorite, Bioshock. Um, as we move further and further along, however, it seems like what uh, video game companies are doing in order to make their game more persistent is to release a game and then to immediately follow it up with downloadable content. Now, uh, DLC is the subject of... of many, many uh, arguments and, and much debate, and <clears throat> we're not really going to go there uh, today. Uh, might talk about it a little bit further on down the line, but uh, uh, Arkham Knight, uh, Batman Arkham Knight, uh, has shipped with several uh, uh, DLC expansions, downloadable content, blah, 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 uh, for it, and uh, I have played several of them so far. Uh, the Harley Quinn story pack and... Uh, Oh God, why can't I remember the, the one with Batgirl? Oh yeah, uh, A Matter of Family. Uh, to kind of enhance the gameplay experience and and, and, and bring more into it. Uh, which I find... I mean, it's, it's neat for additional content and everything, uh, but the game was plenty good on its own. I had my gripes about it, a lot of people had their gripes about it, but the game was plenty good on its own. Um, why, why, I mean, why bring this other stuff to bear? Uh, and then, of course, there's the school of thought where if you've got additional content, why don't you just release it with the game? Why are you making me uh, pay more for it and wait more for it? Uh, but, but, again, that's a discussion we're not really going to have right now. So again, we're going to be looking at two different uh, DLCs here for Batman Arkham Knight, uh, the Harley Quinn story pack, and the Batgirl A Matter of Family pack. Um, they are uh, sold separately. You can get them both with the Arkham Knight Season Pass, uh, which for all intents, uh, or, or, or all things considered, not for all intents and purposes, um, <clears throat> I think is rather reasonably priced at what I believe is $40 uh, on the PlayStation Network. I'm not sure how expensive it is uh, on, the, uh, on the Xbox marketplace or whatever the heck it's called um the question of course is uh should you get them that depends entirely on whether or not you've dropped the 40 dollars for the season pass That really wasn't a very telling short version, so let's see if I can kind of sum things up uh, before I start verbally running on at the mouth um the Harley Quinn um uh, the Harley Quinn uh, story pack is, is forgettable. You can probably skip that unless you've just got a massive uh, hard-on for Nightwing who pops up at the very end in a boss fight uh, that is also uh, unremarkable. Um, All in the Family is a different story entirely, and it's absolutely worthwhile um, if you crave Batman and want more Batman. Now it's the part where we expound on all that a little. Um, the Harley Quinn story pack... Um, takes place right before the beginning of Batman Arkham Knight, uh, and it's Harley going to go and bust Poison Ivy out of the Bloodhaven uh, prison so that she can bring Poison Ivy uh, to Scarecrow to uh, begin the events that transpire uh, at the beginning of Arkham Knight. Um, it is incredibly short. If you're good, you can probably beat the whole thing in 15 to 20 minutes. It's very short. Um... 
and, and, and paying any amount of money for it whatsoever would just almost seem offensive. Um, it, it, yeah, it's it's very short, very 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 short. Um, it was it was thrown in as just a little bit of fan service, a little bit of afterthought is what it feels like. Um, as a combatant, Harley is obnoxious. Um, she uses the same lines over and over again. She doesn't just grunt or make noise whenever she's in combat. She uses these horrible one-liners and two-liners over and over again. Um, her combat is clumsy. She doesn't have nearly as many gadgets as the other people do, and yet the fighting style uh, is is <clears throat> deeply reminiscent uh, of the one that uh, the rest of the game uses. Uh, on one hand, the combat system for all of the Arkham games has been, has been really deep and really, really fantastic. Uh, on the other hand... Uh, after four games and lots of downloadable content, it's kind of starting to get old. Um, and you really, really kind of feel some of that in the Harley pack. Um, very, very short. Definitely. Uh, one of the upsides, uh, though, from a purely artistic standpoint, is uh, all of the players have some kind of detective vision or uh, something like that that, you know, sight, sight upon sight. Anybody? Anybody? The Eye of Thundara? Okay. Anyway. Um, but, uh, or Sight Beyond Sight or something like that. Anyway. Nerd fail. Um, Harley has psychosis vision or, or something like that. Um, when, when you turn it on, the whole world turns kind of a grimy red and there's writing all over the walls. And if you wait long enough, you can hear Harleen Quinzel inside of her head uh, trying to talk to her. Uh, which is a nice... A uh, little touch, nice little uh, artistic flourish. Uh, Harley is frequently seen as a kind of a one-dimensional character, and just a pawn uh, to the Joker's machinations. And and uh, it's a shame because I, I think that's a wasted IP that they could go deeper with. Uh, Harley away from Harley away from Joker, uh, I think is is rife with potential. Uh, unfortunately, none of that gets uh, explored in the game. So. Um, <clears throat> completely putting that aside, uh, we can move on to A Matter of Family, which is the Batgirl DLC. It takes place before uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, back when Batgirl was Batgirl, uh, before uh, the events in uh, The Killing Joke uh, took place, and uh, the Joker shot her and uh, crippled her and confined her to a wheelchair, and she became the super hacker uh, known as Oracle. Um, a lot of the promotional material for this DLC really was misleading. Um, you know, her, her own combat style and, and Batgirl's not as strong as Batman is, but, but she's a super hacker and we really wanted to bring some of that to bear in the combat style. Unfortunately, they don't bring a scrap of her hacking ability to bear in actual combat. In predator-based situations, you have the ability to hack a couple of environmental objects uh, and and to distract enemies that way. But you're you're using the same remote hacking tool and the same remote hacking mechanic uh, that you've been using as Batman for the last three games. So it's completely unentertaining. It's just Batman line. It's Batman with boobs, uh, which, for the record, her character her character model is drawn. Uh, very stereotypically um, when she's standing still she's not just standing there she's got one hip one hip cocked out and has come hither hair and um, it's I don't know with all the stuff that's been going on the internet I, I was a little disappointed to see that they didn't uh, do something a little less you know a, a little less sex kittenish but um uh, uh, combat system again is still the same as the old Batman very crisp uh, you get a few of his gadgets uh when you're playing as her, you remember the remote hacking tool, explosive gel, the line launcher, and batarangs, but um, none of the rest of the really, really cool stuff that Batman gets. Uh, and and really, the, the, the hacker gimmick of you need her to disarm all the bombs uh, is it, it, hugely uninspired. Um, what revives... Uh, that particular game gameplay segment is the setting <clears throat> at this uh, basically this giant amusement park built on top of a tanker ship um, 
I'm not entirely sure where the story is behind it, but there is story, and you can uncover it depending on how profuse with the level you are. Um, even after you beat the main story, which, again, really kind of short. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm really kind of been you know, depressed with how short these uh, these these gameplay campaigns have been. Uh, the good news is, after you beat the gameplay campaign for All in the Family, um, you can go back and play the re- the the open world, the amusement park, and there are goodies and trophies and tests of skill and you know, all kinds of other neat things that are inside the fair, and you should absolutely go find them because uh, it's a whole lot of fun. So, you know, from that standpoint. Um, it wasn't bad, but the DLC itself, if you don't buy the season pass, the DLC itself uh, retails for uh, seven bucks. I'm. It's not horrible, but I'm really. I. I, I it's just not, not doing it for me. It's fun. You know, I'm glad I have the season pass, and I'm, I'm glad I got to download it, and I'm glad I got to play it, but it's really just not doing it for me, which leads to the question, you know, what's what's going on with the season pass uh, from Arkham Knight? Is it is it worth a damn? Well, <clears throat> there is quite a bit worth of additional contact uh, coming with the season pass, this Red Hood story pack, which I'm super stoked uh, to play. Of course, there are the Scarecrow Nightmare missions that are right now a PlayStation exclusive, but it's my understanding that they will be coming to the other platforms later. Um, there is a entirely separate gameplay mode coming called, I think, like Gotham City Trials or, or oh, what's it called? Uh, Gotham City Stories, um, and that that follows you know Batman's partners and 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 there's uh, what's the other one? Uh, Season of Infamy which is a, a whole other gameplay campaign uh, with lots of new villains and mini bosses etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, there's there's there will be Batmobile racing uh, with different legendary Batmobiles and a track for each Batmobile and uh, you know think Mario Kart for the Batmobile which you know what neat concept if it wasn't for the fact that controlling the Batmobile just it sucked it just absolutely sucked. I cannot believe that they would wrap a DLC around one of the most unsatisfying aspects of the whole game. That was a bad move. In closing, so far, the Arkham episodes have had the same major problem uh, that that makes them a questionable purchase on their own. Uh, but I, so far, I do feel that the season pass has been worth it, and I think all the additional content uh, is going to make it worth it. But that... That same problem is, again, after you spent four games being the Batman, especially in Arkham Knight, by the time Arkham Knight finishes, you've, you've, you, you're used to being able to run combat a certain way, and, and because the combat engine in the game is used uh, so shamelessly with the other characters... Um, you play Harley Quinn, and it's just Batman with a different skin on with fewer gadgets. Uh, you know, you play Nightwing, it's Batman with a different skin on and different gadgets. You play Batgirl, it's Batman with a different skin on and fewer gadgets. Um, some of them hit harder than others. Um, some of the combat anim- animations are different. You know, it's it's neat to watch how they have engineered uh, the, the, the different motions, you know, each character's combat style appears a little bit different in terms of you're used to seeing Batman use a certain, you know, series of punches and kicks and whatnot in order to get the job done. Uh, and, and you know, Catwoman looks a little bit different and employs certain acrobatics that Batman never did. And, you know, uh, it's the same thing can be said of Batgirl, but ultimately, once combat really starts to get fast and furious, you know, punch, punch, parry, punch, punch, gadget, gadget, punch, punch, parry, punch, punch, um... And there's just not enough uh, to differentiate between them. Even the uh, even the combo takedowns, uh, you know, being able to bounce back and forth between the characters, kind of lose some of their luster because there's just there's just not enough of a difference in the combat styles to make them feel really, really unique. Uh, and I worry about the rest of the episodes that, uh, you know, when when um, Gotham City Stories comes out. Uh, and you've got all those different playable, you know, Batman and Catwoman and Robin and Nightwing. and uh, You know, when you've got all those different playable characters, and they're all identical, uh, you know, especially given how poorly they uh, capitalized on uh, the opportunity that they had with Batgirl to bring a really unique 
style of combat uh, to the game. Um, I just I really, really worry that uh, the rest of the Arkham episodes uh, aren't going to flesh out the way that they should. Um, it's it's if, if you really, really enjoy the Batman games, and I do, I really enjoyed them. I don't necessarily uh, regret playing any of the episodes, but uh, uh, it's a lot more of the same thing. Uh, it really, really is. Button. 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 <laughs> Almost forgot, there is one really awesome bit of fan service to be had uh, in the All in the Family uh, Arkham episode. Uh, the the, uh, the the primary thrust of All in the Family is your your squ- it's, it takes place before Arkham Asylum, and uh, you're squaring off against the Joker and Harley in a, a floating amusement park, which is a neat setting uh, for the game. But uh, Harley, when you do finally square off against her uh, in the last battle of the game, is wearing her Batman the Animated Series tumbling outfit. Not the, the, the slinky trash, you know, leather lingerie bondage get-ups that you see her in in the games, which I'm not saying those are necessarily bad. Clearly somebody spent an awful lot of time on the decolletage uh, on the front of those costumes. Uh, but seeing her in the Batman the Animated Series uh, jumpsuit with the uh, Jester's cap and everything was a, uh, just a really, really pleasant nod and uh, a bit of fan service that I found extraordinarily gratifying, even if it does look horribly out of place. Uh, but it was kind of cool to see her wearing it.